It's your boy HD, and today I'll be talking about why aren't you getting interviews at cybersecurity. Stay tuned. What up, everybody? It's your boy HDA. Appreciate everybody who's been tuning in to the channel. You see, y'all guys have helped the channel grow, and I appreciate everybody sharing and all the comments and all the love. I couldn't do it without you. So let me be the first one to tell you that I really do appreciate you and everything that you do. But if it's your first time on the channel, I talk about cybersecurity, resumes, job search tips, you name it. I talk about all that. And if you're interested in that, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and hit that bell icon button. So now, what this video is about is, why aren't you getting callbacks for interviews in cybersecurity? It could be a lot of things, but I'm gonna talk about some of the things I witnessed seeing. So on my Twitter, I had this post that I posted. I pretty much made this tweet on Twitter for a recruiter. Basically, it was two sock rolls that were remote, and if you had experience, to DM me. And I got some good candidates and well I don't want to say that this sounds bad I believe every candidate could do the position but if I was to go strictly off their resumes and experience only three of the people that reached out to me fit the bill for this position because they were also looking for mid-level sock people now the reason why I prefaced it with that is because you know, there are diamonds in the rough when it comes to this, but honestly, what I found out is the reason why some people are not getting interviews is simple. Resume. And I don't like to put a lot of stock in resumes because, you know, I made videos about should you lie on your resume and all that stuff. But when it comes down to this, I saw things and it's not bad. You know, sh shout out to the gentleman because I already know I I've been there for you just trying to get in the door. They didn't lie, but they they changed some of the names on their roles, and you know that doesn't help you any. For example, their summary would say they're a cybersecurity specialist, but when you look at their roles, they don't have anything to do with cybersecurity. And here's the thing: you can leave your summary as is if you want to transfer into cyber. All we need to do is use, show your transferable skills, the roles that you did, security related things in your job descriptions. So if you were over user accounts or something like that, we would use something on the lines of a, a buzzword of saying you did access management, uh, a word like that. And, and that will show that you understand what access management or, you know, you're responsible for our back. Anything like that, we'll, we'll use stuff like that in your role because that's not lying, it's what you did, but you're using the terms that you hear more frequent in cybersecurity. That's how you do it. You don't say if you're an IT support specialist, you change your role to cybersecurity specialist. Any interviewer is going to know that, hey, this guy doesn't necessarily have the experience, they just saying stuff so they can get some bites. And I'm going to tell you guys, it's a lot of people trying to get into cyber. Recruiters are seeing a lot of resumes and they're not going to waste time on something. They'll know from the summary and when they browse down what they get. And also, you know, I, I saw that some people don't know the skills needed to do what the role that they're trying to do. So even for something as a sock role, uh, some people didn't have any. Well, granted, everyone can have sim experience, but there are ways to get around having a certain experience, whether it's Arcsite, Splunk, Elk Stack, Alien Vault, Solar Winds, you name it. It's ways to get around it, but you have to research. When you don't have the luxury of having an internship or experience, you have to research and, and want to learn new things on your own in order to show recruiters that, yeah, I've been doing help desk for three years, but let me show you what I did in my free time. Let me show you what projects I worked on. Um, you had some structure, you know, some resume structure issues that could be fixed. But I think the biggest thing was I took away from it was not knowing what skills you need to do the role. And that's something that I talked about. And I'm going to tag it up here. Uh, the roadmap to how to get into cybersecurity. That's a big thing. And I got to see firsthand. I was telling um, shout out to Dayspring aka day cyberwalks i was telling him that man i see how recruiters feel i'm i'm getting some people reaching out to me 
and I'm really seeing some good things and I'm seeing some, you know, that's just hoping it sticks and hoping it lands. And like I said, if you're one of the people that send me a resume and you see this, you know, I don't mean to offend you. It's just a, this is a way that I can respond to everybody or people in the future to tell them what you do. So let's check this out. So if you are trying to get into cyber, your summary, you can have a summary objective depending on how many years of experience you have. If you had like four or five years of experience or something else, you need a summary and then you can use your summary to show detail what you've kind of did in your roles and your mindset and what you plan to do if you get a cyber role. If you probably have a year or two experience, we can do more so an objective looking to see, show them what you want to do in cyber, what you're interested in, like straight to the point. And you can tailor make your summary or objective for any role that you want to get into. Secondly, look at job roles, look at job descriptions, look at the things that you need to be done. If you don't know those tools or you can't talk about them, research them. Once you research them, once you play with them enough and you get, you know, talk about five, 10 paragraphs about it, throw it on your resume. Job descriptions, a little different too. You want to show them that you have transferable cyber skills in your roles. So like I said, we will use certain buzzwords that would align with cybersecurity in your roles. And I don't care if it's help desk, sysadmin or SQL or look, even customer service or a target or something like that. Like it's, it's ways to still show you, you did some stuff because believe it or not, everybody's role has cybersecurity in it. And just to segue into something, for example, I tweeted this on, actually I put this on my LinkedIn. I was talking about how when I did help desk, we used Anacam. Anacam was used for multi-factor authentication. And one of our jobs was, you know, sometimes make sure users got the push. Um, well, not actually wasn't a lot of pushes then. They would just um, most of the time get the access code to log on to OWA. Or we had to make sure, yeah, we could actually make sure that they could get the access code. And we had to make sure that their information was up to date. Because so when you look at it that way, that is a security task because you want to prevent people from getting into their email when they aren't on the work environment or on a VPN. And that's a security. I'm just telling you, it's, it's something simple like that. And you'd be surprised. You run into a lot of those things where, look, multi-factor authentication is, is big time. And even as far as, look, when people call into the service desk, you have to verify, I think we have to verify their uh, first name, last name, email address, I think their airport, and something else but we have to do all those you know because we have to make sure they are who they said they were because you know if you're an attacker and you don't really know what they do or maybe you heard some things you don't know what airport they work at but you can say oh, my name is john smith and uh, this is my email and blah 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 but if you don't know the airport oh sir okay you're gonna have to have your supervisor call in to identify you that's simple making sure we have to make sure you know they had the pip card policy in place. So making sure users had the PIV card if they want to log in with their username and password, we had to go through a process of that to relax their machine. Back then it was tedious to me, but now being in cyber for the years I've been in, I understand how important that was for that process. So these are all things that are security related, even though they just seem like simple help desk things. And when you can pull these things off and do them together, put them on your resume in a nice way in a fashion, they understand because you get the thought process behind security. A lot of times people try to make it rocket science. It's not. You just got to display that you know what you're doing. And I think lastly, I'll probably add in some certifications. Only, like I said, most of the time I say you don't have to go past SEC Plus. It was just some security science. If you're thinking about getting the cloud, maybe throw in something from Azure, AWS, you know, stack it with a cloud practitioner and then maybe solution architect or or something like that, kind of uh, interesting search stack to trying to show your skills, where you want to go, and things like that can help you on your resume. They, I'm not gonna say they're gonna help you get the job, but they'll help you at least get a call back. And that's the first thing. Getting a call back is the first thing that we are working on. Just, you know, hey, you know, you know, if you're playing basketball, I'm not gonna, if I, got, if I have a son or something like that, which I'm trying to play, if I'm showing him how to play, I'm not gonna say, okay, pull up from three. Go do an elbow jumper. The first thing I'm gonna show them how to do is, hey, go to this goal right here. You see that square? Aim it at the square, it's gonna go in. First thing I do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll my layup. To me, 
Getting somebody to call you back just from applying to a position with your resume, that's the layup. But guys, it's just been a short video on why I've been seeing some people not getting cybersecurity interviews. I hope it was helpful to you. If I left something out, please let me know in the comment section. If you'd like help with your resume or you want to schedule a consultation call, my Cavaline link is in the description below. And if not, you always can go to textualconsulting.com forward slash services and I'll get you right. But hey, appreciate everything you guys do. It's your boy HD. 